Hello, everyone, and welcome to this next episode of SpinCast. I have Cole Prescott here with me from Northwestern College. I'll hand it off to him real quick and let him tell you guys where he's located. Hey, guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Cole Prescott, Director of Esports at Northwestern College in Orange City, Iowa. Uh, we are in our fourth year as a, as a varsity program here and excited to be on SpinCast today. Awesome. We kind of head right into the first question. So um, sounds like you guys are a varsity program. Do you also have a club level as well? Or right now you kind of sit in that varsity level. Yeah, so right now we just operate at the varsity level. Um, we don't currently have a club underneath. That's something we've we've talked about and looked at. But right now we're just kind of focused on building up a really solid varsity program before we start anything new. Gotcha. Um, is your varsity program located in like athletics, rec, or where's that kind of sit under? Yep. So we are under the athletic department. So we're even just in the eyes of the school, we are classified as a varsity sport, just like mm -hmm. all of our other teams here on campus. Awesome. Um, about how many players teams do you guys currently have? Yes, yeah, so we currently have uh, one Overwatch team and two Rocket League teams, making up around 15 to 16 students. Um, that's kind of our, our current phase. We're looking to build that up to about 24 students is kind of the, the varsity level we'd like to sit at. We're looking at potentially um, building up to a third Rocket League team and two mm -hmm. Overwatch teams. And then uh, we are looking at possibly adding Valorant as well as kind of our next potential addition. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, do you guys offer esports scholarships as well? Yep. Yeah. So as a varsity sport, just like our other teams, we offer scholarships at the same kind of level that we do with with all of other sports here on campus. So we do scholarship for esports, something we're happy to be able to provide to our students. Gotcha. Um, what are some of the main like trade skills that you kind of look for in a recruit? Yeah. So when I look at recruits, you know, obviously there, there's always that first piece of just like, oh, like the game skill, but you know, there, there's a lot that can be learned in that area. So for me, the, the areas that I hit really hard on are like how, what's their work ethic, right? Are they willing mm -hmm. to work hard? How open-minded are they? Are they willing to learn? Are they open to feedback and coaching? Are they open to um, feedback and dialogue with their teammates? Um, mentality is another huge thing. You know, are they positive and encouraging? Um, do they have a resilience to hardship and to, to team strife, right? Because it's it's different, you know, playing ranked and online versus being in an in-person team environment. You're going to be here for, for four years and you've got to maintain and build relationships. So that sure. willingness to learn, the the working hard, the positive mentality, and then going with that, you know, communication skills. Uh, how are you at communicating with your teammates? Those are the main things I look at even before just like in-game skill. Sure. And I was also going to ask, so you mentioned the in-game skill. Um, you know, obviously you, you probably have a baseline in terms of skill you're kind of looking for. Um, but is that is that kind of the first thing you look at? Um, or like, what are some of the first things that kind of just stand out to you if you're kind of talking with a player, like looking at a player's profile, let's say, or something like that? Yeah, obviously, like for in-game skills, one of the first things that we see that we come across, mm -hmm. um, and there's always a baseline with that. But, you know, with with where we're building, we're, we're looking to go deep in the games that we run versus, you know, going broad in lots of titles. You know, I mentioned three sure. Rocket League teams, two Overwatch teams. So we do have um, a pretty wide range of skill sets that we are open to as far as in-game skill goes. But other than in-game skill, like the other thing that, that we'll look at, you know, is what... <clears throat> What other experience do they have in a team environment? You know, like that that's always something that stands out to us if they have played on a high school team or if they've played on, you know, online teams. Um, that's that's something that's always positive in our minds is having that prior um, opportunity to play with a team and, and work with people. Um, academics is another huge one. Like, um, you know, if you're talking esports things all aside, you know, you come to college to get a degree. Can you handle things in the classroom? Will you stay eligible? Like though that probably, you know, even before the skills I mentioned earlier, the first mm -hmm. thing that is, you know, academics, will you make it here? Um, will yeah. you be able to handle that stuff? Because, you know, if that's not there, nothing else really matters. And just out of curiosity, you have some schools who, you know, can roster seems like up to like 12, 14 titles. You have others who kind of stick with the bread and butter of like three yeah. to four. What's kind of your reasoning for sticking with kind of the bread and butter and the couple that you roster currently? Yeah. So my philosophy is like anything we do, we want to do really well. Um, mm -hmm. That's just kind of like the culture of the school here. Like we have, you know, at the athletic department as well, we have a pretty uh, strong history of, of excellence and high achievement. And so we've just kind of decided that, you know, rather than spreading ourselves too thin, we want to make sure that we can be really focused on developing good systems, good structures for the games that we have. And I think part of that is having depth. I think there's a, a better experience to be had, you know, if you've got, 
you know, your, your four to five teammates, or right? Rocket League, you've got, you know, just your two teammates, a team of three people. It's harder to build that like culture community. There's less people to collaborate and work with, you know, uh-huh. this year, last year we only had one Rocket League team this year. We've got two, you know, going from three players to seven players has been such a boost just to their enjoyment of the program, having more teammates, their ability to learn and work with more people, get more perspective. So for us, we just, we just find a lot of value in having greater depth in those titles from a student experience standpoint and from a student growth standpoint, there's more opportunities for people to, to learn and grow. So that's why we've taken that approach. Um, we just kind of think that if we're, you know, if we're narrow with what we focus on, we can do it better than if we try to do too mm-hmm. much at once. Gotcha. No, it definitely makes a lot of sense. Um, kind of off that too. Um, do you like recruit or look for um, students who are looking to help the program in like non-player roles or not so yeah. much? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. So we have, you know, we have a student or two who are involved in like our broadcasts in particular are students we're always mm-hmm. looking forward to be involved in that. So we have a student who is not a competitor at all. Like he's just on scholarship to to help run the broadcasts on the back end. He does a lot of the, the production with, uh, you know, with the broadcast software. Um, so he's been awesome in, in that regard. We've had students help with team managing, social media. Um, those are all roles that we're constantly recruiting for, looking to build up, you know, the, the industry infrastructure side of things, the opportunities for students who, you know, aren't interested in competing or they are interested in competing and doing, you know, one of those roles. Right. So, mm-hmm. yeah, that's, that's definitely something we recruit and, and scholarship for. Gotcha. And also I see kind of a picture of your space in the background here, but what does kind of like your facility space look like? Yeah, so we've got the main arena, which is behind me here. Um, We have currently 12 PCs in that space. That's where Mm -hmm. a lot of our teams practice and compete. We have another room um, just around the hall that's kind of serves the same function. It's kind of our secondary practice competition space. We have six PCs in there. So that way we have, you know, game day, two different teams at a time. They can be in separate spaces, not not crossover with noise bleed, things like that. So we have... 18 PCs overall. In addition to that, we've got our kind of uh, our caster booth in another room that's that's near the second room, just again around the hallway again, um, where our where our casters you know are set up on game day again, kind of avoiding some of that noise bleed. So we're pretty happy with the the spaces we've got built up. Every year we've improved and expanded what we've been able to offer as far as facility and infrastructure. So awesome! No, that's really cool. Um, do you guys host any like events, camps, anything like that? Yeah, so we we've just kind of gotten started with doing more stuff event wise and, and camp wise. We hosted some some summer camps uh, this previous summer for you know middle school and high school students in the area. Um, we haven't hosted any like collegiate competition, but that's something we've been thinking and talking about now that you know our arena continues to. Now we've got more equipment here and more space. Mm-hmm. That's something we started looking at doing for that with you know, both with college stuff, with even high school, local high school competitions. So it's something that we historically haven't done a lot of, but now that we're a little more settled in our space and, and infrastructure, we're looking at that all the time more and more. Awesome. Well, no, that's cool that you guys host camps. So it's a great way to, um, you know, get kind of the local local players involved and kind of re- know your college if they didn't know it too well, kind of get them in and stuff. Um, so that's really cool. Um, what are some of the biggest challenges that you come across with your program? Yeah. So for us, like being being a newer program, I mean, newer program, four years now, we're not as new as we used to be. But, you know, a lot of our players, some of them have have prior team experience, whether it's esports or non esports, but a lot of them haven't. And so I think that's not uncommon in, in programs. And so that's something that we've been really intentional at. You know, we, we knew that coming into it, that not a lot of people had team experience. And so we've, mm-hmm. we've been really focused on teaching the communication skills, teaching the teamwork skills, how, how to function and train as a team. I think we've overcome that challenge pretty well. Like we have, we've developed a really solid team culture and, and expectations here and that's served us well. Um, you know, and, and that's been that other piece too, right? Building the team relationships and culture. People will never forget to practice the esport, right? They never forget to, to play the game, sure. but it's those other skills and other aspects of being a team that, can get ignored if not intentionally faced. So we've been really intentional with making sure that, you know, we hit hard on, on building a good culture that we're, you know, empathetic and encouraging that we communicate and debrief things well. And, and that served us, served us quite well. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely the, um, one of like the biggest differences between like sports and esports in terms of like um, collegiately is in esports, you know, you can just solo queue your way from when you started playing the game in high school or whatever. Um, while yeah. in sports, you know, you're playing for your high school team or you're playing on a travel team. That's right. not necessarily the case 
in esports. Um, is there any specific like skill set or thing that you try to implement that has really raised the bar? Like, is it communication? Like, is there something along those lines that has really helped? Yeah, I think communication has been one of the biggest things we worked on. Just like talking about, hey, the things that should and should not be said, like in the middle of practice, in the middle of matches, right? Like cutting out the fluff of communication, um, even just the the way in which players communicate, like the the way they communicate information. It's like, hey, be careful with your tone. Be careful with how you bring things up um, and not just bringing things up. But as you receive things, know that like, hey, we are all, you know, we are on the same team. We're centered around the same set of goals. So in the moment of practice, there will be times, right? Be careful with what you say and be intentional with what you say. But there will be times where you might slip up or you might, you know, say a careless word or, or give some poor feedback or some irritable feedback, you might say. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're on the receiving end of that, like, be gracious, be patient, know that, you know, that that frustration is driven primarily by, you know, hunger, by drive to succeed and to grow as a team. And so we, we take the time, you know, outside of practice to talk through any of those instances, just like, hey, yep, this is just what I'm going for. This is what we're trying to achieve. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to come across as, as hard or harsh. I can communicate that better in the future. Just there's being intentional, right, with, with talking mm-hmm. about it, with making sure people are, are clear on where am I coming from, what motivates what I say, and, hey, how can I do better with with what I say? Because there's, you know, some players can can fall into the the excuse, honestly, of like, well, hey, like, I'm it's for the team or whatever. It's like, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm passionate or whatever. It's like, well, passion needs to be tempered, right? Like, mm-hmm. that, that's no excuse for, for flaming or, or toxicity. So sure. that's a lot of, of what we focused on and, and built. And, you know, as it has become more seated in our culture, it becomes easier as we bring in new players, they get an idea of like, oh, okay, this is how we do things here. Um, yeah. So that it was definitely something like our first two years um, that we really shaped very intentionally and, and continue to maintain and it's, it's served us well. Yeah, communication is key, as they say. So um, yep. definitely a, a important thing there. Um, kind of in the reverse of that previous question, um, either like kind of the most proud biggest achievement within your program or a couple of proud achievements, things like that. Yeah, yeah. Two things I'll, I'll hit on, kind of just the, the program side and then competition side. So like sure. overall, just in the program, the the things that I'm proudest of is honestly that team culture, that team relationship. Like that's something that as we looked at our program here, like what do we want to be? One of our, our kind of core pillars and goals is to to be a place where students can experience authentic relationships and build real friendships that are impactful in life and meaningful and just beyond you know the the hours we spend in the arena can you take these relationships with you and so watching watching this program be a place where students from different backgrounds different majors have come together and and built real and lasting friendships that um, are meaningful has just been so rewarding um, to see and to be a part of so that's probably number one for us um, combined with that, you know, we, we've had a good number of students graduate from our program. It's always fun to see students succeed, um, not just in our program, but heading out into the world beyond. And then, you know, the last two years, we've had two players who were awarded, you know, NACAD All-American status, um, which has been awesome. We had one last year and the year before that. So just mm-hmm. seeing our players achieve and, and do great things and, and have a meaningful experience and relationships has been awesome. Um, on the more competitive side of things, you know, one of our, <laughs> one of our early years, I think it was our first year as a varsity sport. <clears throat> we, you know, we had a, we, we had a pretty solid team in, in a running. We were competing in our first tournament or our first season, I guess you would say. Um, and we we lost to only like one team, I think, in the regular season. And we ended up wow. you know, face, facing that team again in the championship and ended up beating them. So it was fun to kind of get our first trophy, get our first win and, and battle through some of that diversity to to come back and kind of take a rival in the championship match. So that's something that we always like to look back on um, as kind of a fun competitive memory. Um, from more recent years this year, we, we traveled to a land tournament in Mankato, Minnesota. Our Rock League mm-hmm. team you know, performed really quite well. We, we achieved fifth out of 16 teams there, and we were really happy with that result. It was a, a pretty new roster that we had put together. So it's just fun to yeah. see, your, see your guys compete and succeed. Awesome. Um, kind of wrapping it up here. If you give one piece of advice to any uh, recruit you know, player watching, what would it be? 
Yeah, two two things I'll hit on kind of one just college search piece and then two like more the esports side of things. Um as far as just as you're looking for a program, looking for a college, know your two must-haves, right? Know what are the two things that my future college must have or must have in place or has to be like, right? I have an idea of what do I want this place to be? What does it need to have? Um, before you start looking or as early as you can, if you've already started looking, have that in mind. Think about that. Decide that for yourself. And then secondly, like go on campus visits, right? Like get on campus, get face to face with the coaches, get face to face with your future teammates, um, get an idea of, you know, what is the food like? What are the dorms like? Can I see myself living here for the next four years? And, and it's hard to get an answer to that question if you're not, uh, if you don't get on campus. So go on campus visits, know your must haves, know what you want from a college. Um, as far as like how to make yourself more attractive as an esports recruit or um, more desirable from a recruiting perspective, you know, it's kind of some of that what I talked about earlier is like focus on the skills that are beyond the game, right? Like every coach assumes you play the game and that you are working hard to become a better player as far as your in-game skills go. Um, but focus on your communication, your teamwork skills, your mentality, right? Are you positive? Um, you know, your your leadership skills, your curiosity from your from your learning perspective. And a good way to do that is like join a team. You know, whether it's an esports team, if your high school has one, great. If not, you know, there there are online teams for, for players at different ranks, but it doesn't have to be an esports team. You know, join join a traditional sport, join a debate team, a speech team, some some team or club where you can practice working alongside other people, right? Because that that is honestly what it comes down to in in collegiate esports is those are the skills that'll take you far is can you work with other people can you handle um the the rush of success can you handle the the frustration of the adversity those are all things that come up in the traditional traditional sports setting and the esports setting so it's it's stuff that those are the good things to work on for sure Awesome. No, I mean, that's all that's really important. Uh, the campus visits I personally love as well, because it's just really hard to replicate talking to a coach online or some players in a scrim or something compared to feeling it out. And even like you mentioned, the little things like the cafeteria, you may go and yeah. be like, I don't I can't deal with this for four years. So right. That type of thing. Right. Um, yeah. So that's all good stuff there. Um, I appreciate you taking the time call today to, to kind of talk this through. Um, uh, and for anyone watching, get some great info on your program. Um, so I'll give you a sec to kind of plug. Um, anything where any players, parents watching can uh, come to learn more about your program? Yeah, absolutely. If you want to learn more about our program, you know, the, the best place to go is definitely our, our website. You can go to nwcraiders.com forward slash about esports or forward slash join esports. There's two great links to check out. Um, otherwise, you know, we're, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitch. Um, those are, I have to see just more of the social platforms. If you want some real info, you know, go to the website. Um, otherwise you can get in touch with me, you know, via email, cole.prescott at nwciowa.edu. Mm -hmm. Um, those are the, those are the best ways to, to get in touch with me there. Awesome. Well, excited to see, um, kind of how your teams perform, uh, kind of throughout the semester and next, and, um, we'll catch you guys on the next spin cast.